Hello, and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam, and on this channel I hope to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully it'll whet your appetite to learn more, and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video I'm going to talk to you about tannins, and specifically around what happens if you have too much in your spirit. If you over oak, or if you're using a different type of wood, what happens? And what you can do to fix that problem. Let's get started. Okay, so tannins, what are they? They are a class of compounds based on a compound called a phenol. It's a benzene ring with an alcohol group attached to the top of it. When you get a bunch of them attached together, you get what's called a polyphenol or a polyphenolic compound. This is what class tannins are in. This specific polyphenol is called gallotannin. This is a hydrolyzable tannin. Uh, it's based on a sugar in the middle. This is a glucose molecule in the middle here. And the other type of tannin is called a condensed tannin. They are not based on sugars. They are the result of a condensation reaction with a class of molecules called flavins. What we want to know is what happens if you over oak and you have too many tannins in your spirit. Well, I have this study here. It's from Seagram's, done in 1974. It's titled, Congener Development in Bourbon Whiskey Matured at Various Proofs for 12 Years. So it was a 12 year study, maybe 13 years. Link in the description. This study has a bunch of tables in it. Here are the first, uh, second and third pages. Here, let's see, like this. Has these nice tables in it. This table here shows all the different com compounds that showed up over the years from the six different proofs. So, year one, there are six different proofs, and it shows proof, color, pH, solids, fixed acids, volatile acids, esters, fusel oil, aldehydes, furfural, and tannins. Tannins is the one I'm going to talk about, but it's a good study to look at either way. If you want to see what kind of compounds show up and the kind of trends that happened as it's aging. You'll notice that during year one is when the majority of the tannins show up. So you go from zero to, in this case, for the 106 proof, uh, barrel, they go from 0 to 310 milligrams per liter. But the 155 proof barrel, that's the sixth barrel, it only goes up to 230 milligrams per liter. So off the bat, we can see a trend between the different proofs for every year that the more alcohol you have in the spirit when you put it in the barrel, the less tannins you'll get. And I imagine this is because tannins are more water soluble than they are ethanol soluble. Well, all, you'll also notice that the amount of tannins doesn't jump by a huge amount year after year. So that 106 proof barrel has 310 milligrams the first year. The second year, it's only 370 milligrams. Then it jumps to 450 milligrams. So it's only jumping by about 60 to between 60 and 80 as you go up sometimes not even that much between the third year by the between the third year and the fifth year it only goes up to 49 so tannins overwhelmingly show up at the beginning of your aging so when you have your your new make spirit and you drop pieces of wood into it within the first few weeks probably even the first week maybe a little bit longer, is when it's going to grab most of the tannins out of that wood. If by the end of your aging process, maybe you forgot about it and it's been sitting there for a really long time, you have too many tannins in that spirit. Take out some wood or take it all out and let it mature in a, a neutral container, glass or stainless steel, so it won't react. And see what happens after a few weeks. See if the tannin flavor drops. Maybe open it up each day and then close it because these hydrolyzable tannins which are going to be the majority of tannins that show up will oxidize 
and if you introduce more oxygen, more of it will oxidize. Another option is you can split it with a lesser aged spirit. You know, you can do blending. You can sp spread it across multiple different blendings. Uh, you can blend it with another new make spirit, or you can do what I call the nuclear option. If you are tempted to just throw it out, you can do this process. Tannins and a bunch of other polyphenols will bind to proteins. Now, you've probably seen this. Uh, there was a trend about, I guess, three to four years ago now, where people were doing a lot of milk washing of cocktails. This is essentially the exact same thing, except you're not going to use milk because milk is going to be adding a whole bunch of other things that you don't really want to add to your spirit. To a cocktail, it may be fine, but not to the entire spirit. What you want to add is another protein source like unflavored gelatin. This is the best option in my opinion. You could also add whey isolate. Whey is a milk protein, but you want the isolate so it's just that protein. There's a casein isolate, which is another milk protein. And you want the isolate version of the product versus uh, they, they release it in a bunch of different ways, but isolate means that they're not also adding in carbohydrates and fats, which you'd also don't want to be adding to your spirit. So you get the isolate, it's like 99%. Try and get unflavored isolate, like this gelatin. Although gelatin's cheap and it works really well, as you'll see in the experiment I do later. And then after you add a protein and you've let it settle, or you could cold crash it to get it to settle faster, You'll want to add something else like maybe a bentonite or you could add chitosan or what's this? Uh, isinglass to knock down the gelatin and the tannins. Take out the wood, let it mature in a neutral container on its own for a I'd say three to four, try three to four weeks before you try another step. You may find that the tannin level has gone down and you don't have to try any other steps. If you really don't want to blend it with something else, then you can go with the protein wash option. Uh, if you don't care and you're willing to blend it with something else, then try blending it with something else. You can always do the protein wash as well on top. And then yeah, the protein wash is the nuclear option. Add the proteins, let it uh, mix and sit for, I'd say, at least a day. Add something like bentonite to help pull down all the particulates, because you'll see, you'll see like a mat of particulates form on the bottom of the vessel. But then you'll also see there's particulates that are floating around in the liquid and they don't want to settle properly. That's why you'd use something like bentonite, which will attach itself to those particulates and then gravity will just pull them down. And then you could probably f rack it away and then maybe filter it through a coffee filter just to catch any loose particulates or bentonite. All right, so let's, uh, let's go to that experiment that I kind of regret doing and you'll see why. <laughs> it's not very tasty. All right. All right, so here's the experiment. I have one liter of water. I have one gram of tannins here. Wine tannins comes from chestnut. Typically you'd use this to either increase tannins in your wine or if you had a protein haze, you'd use this to try and clarify it. So uh, one gram of tannins and then I have 400 milligrams of unflavored gelatin, which is made from collagen. And it is, collagen is just made up of proteins. So first we will add the tannins. Now you can see where uh, your spirits get a lot of their color from.
there we go so uh, we'll let this mix for a little bit let those big chunks uh, dissolve down and I'll just speed up the video for you to see that All right, well, while, while those last little chunks are solving, I'm actually going to take a sample and taste it. It's probably going to taste bad. I'll take 20 milliliters. And I am probably going to instantly regret this. Mm-hmm. That was disgusting. It tastes like wood wood tea. <laughs> Cold wood tea, I guess you'd say. Very woody, kind of sour. Now sourness comes from the fact that these are hydrolyzable tannins. So when they mix into the water they become gallic acid and elegic acid and that's where the sourness comes from but now my tongue is feeling really rough <laughs> all right so that has mixed enough just let me get some regular water all right so now i'll add the gelatin and we will see what happens. So 400 milligrams of gelatin. And I will brighten this LED light. Just see if it's easier to see. Now I can already see large particulates forming. I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but it may look cloudier than it was before. It should. It looks like a snow globe almost. I will take a video using my phone just in case you can't see it with that camera. And I'll also see if I can take a, let's see, oh yeah. All right. So at this point, what you'd probably want to do is add in, or probably cold crash at first, or maybe Cold crash it first, add bentonite, and let it settle, and then maybe chill filter it. This is a, a method of last resort if there are way too many tannins in it, like, like that first test I did. So I'm going to take a sample of this and taste it. Probably be equally disgusting, but science. So this looks, color looks the same.
Doesn't smell the same. This smells more. S smells like it's sour. Okay, this is still really sour, but uh, it's not. Doesn't have a gross taste to it. It tastes like sour, sour water that you've had a popsicle stick sitting in. So I mean, there's a hint of a woody flavor there, but it's nothing like what this one is. Can't believe I'm gonna try this again. Way more sour, may more, way more woody. Yes, a lot less mellow. I mean, I wouldn't want to drink water that has this and in the tastes like this in the first place, but it's not horrible. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that, but I turned the stir bar back on and it just kicked up a whole lot of everything. All right, so I'm gonna let it sit and then actually I'll go stick it in the freezer and get it to cold crash and we'll see what it looks like afterwards. We'll be right back. All right, so we're back. I left this in the freezer for an hour. It hasn't completely clarified, but it has significantly. It's a rather thick mat of particulates now sitting on the bottom of the flask. Looks like uh, Parmesan cheese. Anyways, I'm going to taste this, see what this tastes like compared to the last two. Hopefully it is better. Woo! Too much. All right. A little sour. All right, well, let's taste it. Doesn't taste much different than the last one. You can taste that sour note right away. Then it's a little woody. Again, like having a water with a popsicle stick in it or a tongue depressor or something like that. But yeah, much better than that first one. So you could probably add even more uh, gelatin to get it to precipitate out and it works well. I mean, with this, I would probably continue to cold crash it probably for another couple hours and then I'd rack it over to another container and then I might add bentonite to remove what's left of the gelatins that's still floating around in there. Because looking at it, those particulates are not moving at all. So yeah, you'd want to use something like bentonite or Kytosan mixed with or followed by uh, Isinglass. But bentonite's just easier. And then you could just run it through a uh, coffee filter. Yeah, and that's it. That's, uh, that's one way. The point of no return where you're decided you're just gonna, if this doesn't work, then you're just gonna toss it. You could try this first and maybe save your spirit. One warning though is that wild tannins, a type of polyphenol, attaches to the, uh, the proteins. Other types of polyphenols will as well. So you might take out more than just the tannins, you might take out other flavors as well. Could be a good thing. Could mean you have to start oaking again, but it's better than just tossing everything in the first place. So uh, I hope you learned something. Hope you liked the video. Please click like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And have a great week.